subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to never miss a video from Live Law. Hey guys, it's time for legal updates this week from the CLAT versus NLAT controversy, a full-fledged hearing in the loan moratorium extension and interest waiver plea to actress Kangana Ranaut's home's demolition in Mumbai. Courts this week saw many developments. So why wait further? Let's begin with the top court. The Supreme Court allowed National Law University Bangalore to conduct a separate law entrance test on September 12th. However, the bench has restrained the administration from declaring the results and making admissions. You see, the bench was hearing a petition filed by former Vice Chancellor of NLSIU, Professor R. Venkat Rao, and an aggrieved parent of a CLAT aspirant challenging the sudden withdrawal of NLS Bangalore from CLAT 2020 in order to hold a separate entrance test. The court has asked the parties to file their counter in three days and the court has posted the matter on September 16. Just for a clearer understanding of this, I want you to know that all the NLUs are part of a consortium which pans out the CLAT every year amongst other things. NLS on 3rd September said that it will hold a separate test because it could not wait for the CLAT which was postponed on several occasions. NLS said that it did so considering the fact that doing so will delay their admission processes and affect the academic year which follows the trimester system. Top Court has refused to entertain three fresh petitions which sought to postpone the NEET examination for admissions to undergraduate medical courses scheduled to be held on coming Sunday which is today. The petitioners had stressed that they did not seek cancellation of exam, but a mere postponement. The same bench also dismissed another plea seeking postponement or another chance for NEET aspirants who are unable to attend the exam. Supreme Court has referred the issue of the Maratha Kota case to a constitution bench of five judges as it involves interpretation of the Constitution 102 Amendment Act 2018. It has also stayed the operation of the law enacted by the state of Maharashtra, introducing Maharashtra quota for admission in education, uh, educational institutions and for appointments in the public services and posts. Now, this act was originally provided 16% quota to the Maratha community in education and jobs respectively. The Bombay High Court, while upholding the Maratha, uh, Maratha quota, held that 16% of reservation is not justifiable and ruled that reservation should not exceed 12% in, in employment and 13% in education. In the CBSE compartment exams plea, the Supreme Court directed the petitioner to serve notice on the central government to consider prior for provisional admissions to universities. On September 4, a bench of Justices Kanvilkar, Maheshwari and Sanjeev Khanna had directed the CBSC to file an affidavit in reply by September 7, clearly stipulating the scheme of the examination and the way it is to be conducted amid the COVID-19 pandemic situation. The Centre informed Supreme Court on Thursday that an expert committee at the highest level has been constituted in order to take a decision on the issue of moratorium in extension interest during uh, the moratorium extension and other related issues. Solicitor General Tushar Mehta sought two weeks time in order to place on record a comprehensive affidavit in this regard. Court granted the Solicitor General two weeks to place on record the requisite affidavit detailing uh, the same and observed that interim orders shall continue till the next date. Top Court has held that a writ petition under Article 226 of the Constitution would not be maintainable in order to challenge an order which has been passed by the High Court in the exercise of its judicial powers. In this case, the petitioner had filed a domestic violence complaint before the Metropolitan Magistrate in Bengaluru, which was dismissed. Now, appeal against this order was dismissed by the additional sessions judge Bengaluru. The High Court also dismissed the revision petition filed by the petitioner. The petitioner assailed this order passed by the High Court by filing a writ petition under Article 226 with a prayer to declare the judgment of the single judge void. Later, this writ petition was transferred to the Apex Court. The Supreme Court has directed state governments to fix a reasonable charge for usage 
of ambulance services and all ambulance service providers must abide by it. The bench observed that the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare has formulated the India COVID-19 Emergency Response and Health System Preparedness Package on April 23rd and an SOP has also been issued on March 29th. This case is related to uh, seeking uh, directions to increase ambulance services to cater to the surging COVID positive numbers in the country. Bangalore Club, one of the oldest club in Bangalore, is not liable to pay wealth tax under the Wealth Tax Act, said the top court. The bench has set aside a Karnataka High Court judgment which held otherwise. Interestingly, while considering the appeal filed by the club, Justice Nariman noted the history of the club and said, in the year of grace 1868, a group of British officers banded together to start the Bangalore club. In the year of grace 1899, one W.S. Churchill was put up on the club's list of defaulters, which numbered 17 for an amount of rupees 13, being for an unpaid bill of the club. The bill never became an act. Till date, this amount remains unpaid. Churchill went on to become Sir Winston Churchill, Leonard Spencer Churchill, Prime Minister of Great Britain and the Bangalore Club continues its mundane existence. The only excitement being when the tax collector knocks at the door to extract his pound of flesh. Former Union Minister and Congress leader Ajay Makan has moved Supreme Court challenging its recent order directing the removal of about 48,000 jugis from near railway tracks in Delhi. Emphasizing that close to 2.4 lakh people will be rendered homeless when this order is given effect by the Railway Ministry's own admission, Markan pleads that doing so without hearing them would be one of the gravest tragedy and non-observance of principles of natural justice. Now, recently, the Supreme Court bench headed by Justice Arun Mishra in its order dated 31st August had directed that not only will there be no political or other interference regarding removal of encroachments in the specified area, it had also directed that no court may grant a stay on the implementation of the same. High Courts and Other Courts Now Bombay High Court directed the Brihan Mumbai Municipal Corporation to stop the demolition being carried out by the civic body at actor Kangna Ranaut's house in Pali Hill, Bandra, for removal of alleged illegal construction. Kangna's lawyer advocate Rizwan Siddiqui was present outside the actor's house when demolition took place and he attended the hearing sitting in his vehicle parked outside the actor's house itself. Advocate Siddiqui submitted that everything being done is illegal. Delhi High Court issued notice on plea challenging centre's decision to allow telecasting of Sudarshan TV show allegedly communalizing UPSC recruitment of Muslims. However, Justice Naveen Chawla has refused to stay the broadcast of the show. On September 6, central government permitted Sudarshan News TV to telecast its controversial program titled Binda's Bowl on a prima facie uh, finding that its promo is violative of the program code uh, set out under the Cable uh, Television Networks Act. The ministry took note of the channel submission that the show does not violate any law and that if at all any of its content is found to be violative, action as per law may be taken. Now on August 28, the Delhi High Court had stayed the broadcast of Binda's Bowl show after a petitioner submitted that its trailer openly engages in hate speech and defamation against the students of Jamia, Milia, Islamia and the Muslim community. The Delhi High Court granted interim protection from arrest to co-founder of Alt News, Mohammed Zubair, in a plea moved by him seeking quashing of the FIR lodged against him over a tweet made by him in response to a Twitter user. The order has come in a criminal writ petition moved by fact-checking journalist Mohammed Zubair seeking to quash the FIR lodged against him by a Twitter user Jagdish Singh. The case pertains to a tweet posted by Zubair sharing the profile picture of Singh which had him standing with his minor granddaughter and asking after blurring the face of the minor girl if it was appropriate for Singh to use derogatory language in replies while using a profile picture figuring his granddaughter. Madras High Court issued notice to music composer A.R. Rahman on a petition filed by the Income Tax Department 
alleging that he used a foundation in which he is the managing trustee as the conduit to evade tax and routed rupees 3 crore plus income to it. According to Senior Standing Counsel for the IT Department, uh, T.R. Senthil Kumar, in the assessment year 2011 to 2012, Rahman received income to the tune of 3.47 crore in connection with an agreement made with the UK-based Libara Mobiles. Bombay High Court was assured by the Maharashtra state government that no arrest will be made for at least two weeks without giving sufficient notice in a case against a woman booked for tweets against Uddhav Thakri. Court also granted liberty to the woman booked under various provisions of the Indian Penal Court to move uh, the courts in case of any exigency. The National Investigation Agency, the NIA, on Friday informed the Karnataka High Court that central government has taken a decision and is likely to pass an order soon, transferring two cases registered under the Unlawful Activities Prevention Act in respect of the violence that took place within the limits of the DJ Hali and KG Hali police station on August 11 to NIA. That's it for the week. Don't forget to hit like and share and to subscribe to our YouTube channel. See you next week. Subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to never miss a video from Live Law.